Okay, so I want to talk about um, looking at some psyops and sophistry here. I want to look at a story. We've all heard the, the Russian hysteria over the past um, at least two years and, and the way the Russian bots and the Russian influence has swayed the elections and it's the reason Donald Trump's in office and, and all this madness you see on mainstream television. Well, here's a story that just broke, and it's a big one. And I want to go through the story, and then I want to look at some of the philosophical implications. And so this stuff can be spotted earlier on and maybe called out more effectively in the future. Um, we did have a Russian bot disinformation campaign, but it, however, did not work in favor of the Republicans. So let's look at this article here from Zero Hedge. Liberal billionaire apologizes for Russian bot disinfo campaign tied to Hamilton 68. LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman apologized Wednesday for funding an organization that was involved in an effort to spread disinformation targeting Republican Roy Moore in last year's Alabama special election, while helping his Democratic opponent, Doug Jones, who narrowly won the race, according to the Washington Post. Hoffman contributed $750,000 to the American Engagement Technologies, of which 100000 went towards cybersecurity firm New Knowledge, which created over 1,000 Russian-language Twitter accounts that followed Roy Moore overnight in order to link the embattled Republican candidate to Russian influence campaigns, according to a report last Wednesday in the New York Times. So, this this billionaire, this um, this Reed Hoffman, gave seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to this group AET and a hundred thousand to New Knowledge. New Knowledge then created the Russian language Twitter accounts. And then the mainstream media, which they don't mention in this article, in uh, places like the New York Times, places like the Washington Post, ran with these stories over and over and over again that the Republican Party was the one colluding with the Russians. In fact, the collusion was just the invented story. It was used to smear them. It was a, it was a narrowly won race. So this may have swung the election. And it was just, uh, it's as dirty as politics gets right here. So, of note, New Knowledge CEO Jonathan Morgan, who was behind the Alabama election Russian bot scheme, okay, so there were no Russian bots, it was just a scheme, largely developed the methods used by the Hamilton 68 website, which purports to track Russian bot activity. So they just took a guy and they accused him of a crime. They repeated it over and over again and they fabricated evidence. Now, I don't know if this is, well, anyway, let's, let's continue. Each of the above networks consisted of thousands of accounts. In order to identify the most relevant accounts for each, we employed social network analytical techniques, largely developed by the J.M. Berger and Jonathan Morgan. Hamilton 68 has been widely cited by the MSN to support claims of Russian influence in U.S. politics and reports on conservative websites purported to be Kremlin favorites. Okay, so that's this outfit. This is what the media, widely cited by the mainstream media, so they're working hand in hand. They know what they're doing. Um... And it's big money billionaires that are influencing these false narratives. One Project Birmingham tactic was to create false online evidence that a network of Russian automated accounts called bots were supporting more. In his statement, Hoffman called this the most disturbing aspect of the disinformation effort. This and some other key details were first reported in the New York Times. 
Hoffman's statement said that AET had provided funding for New Knowledge, a Texas-based research firm whose chief executive, Jonathan Morgan, has acknowledged using disinformation tactics on a small scale in the Alabama election for a research project. Well, that's interesting. What are they researching? How to use this on a global scale? Morgan has repeatedly denied involvement in the broader effort described in news reports. Morgan said Wednesday that he wasn't aware that the funding for the work in Alabama, which he portrayed as for research purposes, came from Hoffman. So he leaves himself this back door, you know, this research purpose narrative. There's always a way to spin. There's always a way to make yourself look like you were innocent. Um, John Stewart was famous for doing this when he would get caught pushing a little too hard for the left and saying, well, I'm just a comedian. You know, it's his back door out. I can't object strongly enough to the characterization that we were trying to influence an election in any way, Morgan said to the Washington Post. That's strange credulity, but okay. Facebook suspended Morgan and others on Saturday for violating its policies against coordinated inauthentic behavior in the 2017 Alabama election, and has launched an ongoing internal investigation. Disturbingly, New Knowledge wrote a comprehensive new report on Russian disinformation released by the Senate Intelligence Committee last week. Wow. So this is still influencing politics right now. Hoffman's apology is his first acknowledgement of his involvement in the disinformation campaign through AET. I find the tactics that have been recently reported highly disturbing. For that reason, I am embarrassed by my failure to track AET. So he he was giving 750000 knew nothing about it. At just three quarters of a million dollars, it must be nice to be rich. The organization I did support more diligently as it made its own decisions to have perhaps fund projects that I would reject. So he's saying, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have funded this Russian narrative if I'd known this was what they were doing. I wonder where he thought this Russian narr- narrative was coming from in the first place. You realize it's from people that you're giving money to. He was just, I don't know, must be hard to be a billionaire and keep track of how all your money's being used. The statement left key facts unaddressed, including a full accounting of everyone who crafted and executed the campaign. The effort was the subject of a presentation in September to a group of liberal-leaning technology experts. We can just take the leaning out of that. Um, I think that's pretty safe to say. Liberal technology experts who met in downtown Washington to discuss electoral tactics. Okay, that's... That's worth noting. According to one of the attendees and documents from the meeting obtained by the Washington Post, this person spoke on the condition of anonymity because those at the gathering were required to sign non-disclosure agreements, Washington Post. The billionaire LinkedIn co-founder was one of the most active backers of Democrats during the 2016 election, spending millions of dollars between party candidates and dozens of organizations, including startups aimed at using disruptive methods to influence the election. So this guy was spending millions of dollars. He was one of the most active billionaires funding the Democrats, specifically to find disruptive methods to influence the election. And he claims he knew nothing about who was starting the Russia narrative. I mean, this guy should have been like the who's who list of who's creating what narrative. Um, the fact that he claims complete ignorance is, uh, strange credulity. I proudly support aggressive campaigning, whatever that means. Um, that's an interesting phrase, both on the ground and digitally. And that's why we funded organizations that help expand civic, civic engagement. Like these are words that sound good, but what do they actually mean? Aggressive campaigning, lying stretching the truth, spreading false narratives, using the media to uh, 
perpetrate a big lie? I mean, civic engagement, what does that mean? Is that legal voters? Is that illegal voters? Is that stuffing ballot boxes? I mean, these are euphemisms for things that could be fairly dark. Let's see, that's why we funded organizations that help expand civic engagement, said Hoffman in his statement, but I want to be unequivocal. There is absolutely no place in our democracy for manipulating facts or using falsehoods to gain political advantage. And I would agree with that 100%, but see, we're not talking about Donald Trump in this case, we're talking about the left. And we're not just talking about this group or this organization. The Russia narrative and the Russian bot, I mean, this is up with Schumer and Pelosi. This is in the highest levels of government. You see it on late night comedy every night. You see it on the news every night. Anderson Cooper tells these stories every single day. Rachel Maddow has told the Russian narrative story so much, she apologizes for how much she's covered it when she goes in to cover more on the Russian bot, um, apparently completely invented story here. So let's see, the end of this article, Hoffman said Wednesday that he initially invested in American engagement technology because they sought to develop technical solutions to counteract fake news, bot armies, and other kinds of digital manipulation and disinformation while improving civil engagement. Well, he said he had no knowledge that it played a role in testing those tactics in Alabama. Hoffman said the lack of visibility does not absolve me of my ethical responsibility to exercise adequate diligence in monitoring my investments. I would not have knowingly funded a project planning to use such tactics and would have refused to invest in any organization that I knew might conduct such a project. And I kind of wonder why this is all coming out now. Uh, with the New York Times and the Washington Post putting this out now, because there's been questions all along, very reasonable objections to the whole Russian narrative the entire time. And the Washington Post and the New York Times have been promulgating these conspiracy theories rather than doing their due diligence and questioning them. And now all of a sudden there's this uh, coming to the light moment. And so it's very suspicious. I wonder if there's something bigger working out behind the scenes. Maybe it's uh, Mueller's going to come up completely empty here or, or something else going on. You know, there's a lot of horse trading back uh, behind the political curtain that we're not aware of and will never be aware of. Um, but it is, it is something to keep in mind. And I think the, uh, it's fortuitous that it's happening right now. So what I want to look at is I want to go back to our list of logical fallacies. And there's a number that I think we can assign this particular Russian hoax conspiracy to. But, uh, one that really jumped out at me is the, the proof by assertion. A proposition is repeatedly restated regardless of a contradiction, sometimes confused with argument from repetition. So we just kept hearing Russia hacked the election, Russia hacked the election. Meanwhile, all it took was one glance at the electoral map to see that Donald Trump had won in the biggest electoral landslide since Dukakis. Okay, it was a devastating win. Um, Donald Trump flipped states he was not supposed to flip. And rather, and there's your contradiction, right? It's right in your face. He won by a landslide, but they kept, uh, kept repeating this lie over and over and over and over again. Um, so more, more in depth on proof, proof by assertion here, sometimes informally referred to as proof by repeated assertion is an informal fallacy in which a proposition is repeatedly restated regardless of contradiction. And that's big. Like, we know that Donald Trump won by a landslide. What would a Russian influence campaign look like? Certainly not a landslide. Sometimes this may be repeated until challenges dry up, at which point it is asserted as fact due to its not being contradic contradicted. So this is Rachel Maddow 
and Anderson Cooper saying this stuff every night over and over and over again until the critics just don't have the energy to, to combat the nonsense. It's so hysterical. In other cases, its repetition may be cited as evidence of its truth in a variant of the appeal to authority or appeal to belief fallacies. And we saw this in the media all the time where they would cite other articles and they would cite past accusations and say Donald Trump's repeated troubles with the uh, Russian influence that helped his campaign and previous lies were cited in current lies to tell more lies and it just began this stack of nonsense here. So, um, more proof by assertion here. This fallacy is sometimes used as a form of rhetoric by politicians or during a debate as a filibuster in its extreme form. It can also be a form of brainwashing as we've seen poor Rosie O'Donnell screaming at the top of her lungs about nonsense. Modern politics contains many examples of proofs by assertion. The Russian bot and Russian hysteria. This practice can be observed in the use of political slogans and the distribution of talking points. Russia was one big talking point, which are collections of short phrases that are issued to members of modern political par- parties for recitation to achieve maximum message repetition. The technique is also sometimes used in advertising. So I wanted to look at a way that this was used historically. And of course, everybody loves to cite the Nazis, but they're they're an easy subject which to analyze and see in its ugliest form, what is this kind of repetition that we're seeing from the media in tandem with the deep state, in tandem with the Democratic Party, in tandem with these rich billionaires, all colluding to lie to the American public rather than, I don't know, propose something that is going to make America great again. You know, we're struggling down here and being told that Russia is the cause of all our woes, that's laughable. So um, this was used uh, historically called a big lie is a propaganda technique. The expression was coined by Adolf Hitler when he dictated his 1925 book, Mein Kampf, about the use of a lie so colossal that no one would believe that someone could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. Hitler believed the technique was used by Jews to, ja- to blame Germany's loss in World War I on German General Erich Ludendorff, who was a prominent nationalist and anti-Semitic political leader in the Weimar Republic. Hitler's use of the expression, the source of the big lie technique is this passage taken from chapter 10 of James Murphy's translation of Mein Kampf. But it remained for the Jews, with their unqualified capacity for falsehood and their fighting comrades, the Marxists, to impute responsibility for the downfall precisely to the man who alone had shown a superhuman will and energy in his effort to prevent the catastrophe which he had foreseen and to save the nation from that hour of complete overthrow and shame by placing responsibility for the loss of the world war on the shoulders of Ludendorff they took away the weapon of moral right from the only adversary dangerous enough to be likely to succeed in bringing the betrayers of the fatherland to justice All this was inspired by the principle, which is quite true within itself, that in the big lie, there is always a certain force of credibility, because the broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature than consciously or voluntarily, and thus in the primitive simplicity of their minds, they more readily fall victims to the big lie than the small lie since they themselves often tell small lies in little matters, but would be ashamed to resort to large-scale falsehoods. It would never come into their heads to fabricate colossal untruths, and they would not believe that others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously, even though the facts which prove this to be so may be brought clearly to their minds 
they will still doubt and waver and will continue to think that there may be some other explanation, for the grossly impudent lie always leaves traces behind it, even after it has been nailed down, a fact which is known to all expert liars in this world and to all who conspire together in the art of lying. So that's Hitler from Mein Kampf. So the mainstream media is in good company when they decide to double down on this Russian hysteria nonsense. And it, you know, you can bet they're all familiar with this passage. Nobody wants to talk about it. But as, his, as Hitler himself said, this is a fact known to all expert liars who conspire together in the art of lying. This billionaire knew it. These guys receiving all this money knew it. The Democratic Party knows it. The media knows it. The late night comics know it. These guys all know what they're doing. You can see, you can go back and look at history. None of this is an accident. This is a soft coup attempt against a duly elected president. So, according to Hitler, the big lie was a propaganda technique typically used by Jewish Marxists. You can take that however you want. Uh, Goebbels' use of the expression. Later, Joseph Goebbels put forth a slightly different theory, which has come to be more commonly associated with the expression big lie. Goebbels wrote the following paragraph in an article dated 12 January 1941, 16 years after Hitler's first use of the phrase. The article titled, Aw Churchill's Lugan Fabric, or in English, From Churchill's Lie Factory, was published in Die Zeit on Bespiel. The essential English leadership secret does not depend on particular intelligence. Rather, it depends on a remarkably stupid thick-headedness. The English follow the principle that when one lies, one should lie big and stick to it. They keep up their lies even at the risk of looking ridiculous. And you can see this with all the talking heads on TV that push this Russian narrative. Even when it looked insane, when people just threw up their hands in exasperation, if they keep repeating it, and they stare at the camera with serious expressions, you are expected to believe it. So, usage in Hitler's psychological profile. The phrase was also used in a report prepared during the war by the United States Office of Strategic Services in describing Hitler's psychological profile. His primary rules were never allow the public to cool off. Never admit a fault or wrong. Never concede that there may be some good in your enemy. Okay, we can see this for sure. Never leave room for alternatives. Never accept blame. Concentrate on one enemy at a time and blame him for everything that goes wrong. People will believe a big lie sooner than a little one. And if you repeat it frequently enough, people will sooner or later believe it. The quote above appears in a report, A Psychological Analysis of Adolf Hitler, His Life and Legend by Walter C. Langer. So, that is, uh, that is the crux of the uh, proof by assertion. And we can see how it played out historically and, and how if you don't push back and continue to push back and they're, they're just going to keep going and going and going, even when they begin to look ridiculous, it's why, it's why liars always have to be pushed back on because they, they are operating under this fall, uh Policy, absolutely. Never admit to a fault or wrong. Never to accept blame. Concentrate on one enemy at a time. Blame that enemy for everything that goes wrong. Take advantage of every opportunity to raise a political whirlwind. So, these are guys that have worked on the psychology of Hitler. And you can see this proof by assertion. 
at use back in World War II, and we can see that this Russian bot conspiracy colluding with the media, colluding with late-night television, colluding with the Democratic Party, and, and anyone else that is anti-Trump, the anti-Trumpers, National Review, whoever, we've seen this ridiculous story where everyone sticks to their guns. And so again, it'll be interesting to see why this is coming out now, if it's about they may be trying to get ahead of the curve. Maybe uh, someone is going to bust this uh, story wide open, and this is damage control. Um, I'm not sure, but we will see, and we will continue to pay attention and remember to always push back, always push back against the lies, because this is this is the technique that they're using, is proof by assertion.